Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Carmen Amalonso and I'm going to be presenting the work that I did with Nikolai Manny on distributed and localized closed loop model predictive control via system level synthesis. Let me just start by emphasizing how useful model predictive control has been in practice for a variety of industrial applications. And we can think of them as a plant that is trying to solve this optimal control problem, where it's minimizing a cost subject to the dynamics of the plant, constraints on the state of the input, and an initial condition. And if we were to formalize this mathematically, this is how we would write it. Where we're restricting ourselves to linear systems, but other than that, we're not making any assumptions on the functions and the sets other than they are convex. And the way model productive control works is we measure the state of the plant and we use that as the initial condition of our optimal control problem. We compute a sequence of inputs, but we only apply the first one and then we keep going. And this has proven to be very effective for many industrial applications. But these days we're dealing with a different kinds of applications. We are surrounded by large scale networks such as the internet, the power network, or even biological networks. And in this case, what we have is a network and we could embed this network into this setting. However, by doing this, we would be losing all the structure that the network has and due to the large dimension, it would be computationally very expensive and sometimes even unfeasible. So what people have been doing instead is to use open loop distributed model predictive control approaches where each subsystem has its own subcontroller. We're going to focus today here in the case where there is coordination across subsystems. Now to make these approaches robust, people have been following two broad approaches. One of them is to use a pre-computed stabilizing controller. Although this has been computationally efficient, they unfortunately rely on strong assumptions. The other big approach, and this is the one our work fits, is to use a controller parametrization to describe a dynamic structure feedback policy. These approaches have been very successful because they allow to compute distributed controllers via convex optimization. However, these problems lack the structure for distributed optimization, so we're left with a centralized synthesis. We propose to instead use a closed loop approach from the beginning so that our approach is both distributed and localized in the synthesis, meaning how we solve the optimization problem, as well as in the implementation, meaning how we design the subcontrollers. And let me explain what I mean by localized. If we have a localized approach and we think about the blue subsystem, the input of this subsystem can only depend on local information that it gets from close neighbors, but no one else in the network. And it's easy to see that this structure can be achieved by imposing these locality constraints. So if we go back to the setting that we had, by imposing locality constraints, we would be capturing the structure of the network. However, imposing locality constraints is a hard problem because we're restricting the dependencies of the decision variables. And to tackle this problem, we're going to use the system level synthesis parametrization. And in case anyone is interested in SLS, this tutorial paper is a great place to start. And so just as a very quick overview of SLS, if I have a linear system that I can describe with this dynamics, I might as well write them in this block form. And so this is an alternative way of writing dynamics. And this is just notation that will be useful later. And we can do the same with the controller. We're using a time varying controller over a finite time horizon. So we're not introducing any conservatism. And notice that this controller, because of convolution in this block notation, it becomes a block lower triangle angular operator. Now what SLS does is it doesn't care what the open loop is doing and what the controller is doing, it just cares about the closed loop maps between disturbance, state, and input. And these fees are exactly what SLS parameterizes. Just for reference, these fees have also a block lower triangular structure. And the SLS theorem provides a sufficient and necessary condition for two closed loop maps to parameterize the system. We can now go back to our problem statement and perform a change of variables. We're going to introduce the assumption that there is no driving noise, and this is going to make our computations easier, but adding driving noise is not going to make things much more complicated since we are already closed loop. So in what follows, we will only work with the first block column, and now we can go ahead and perform the change of variables in the cost function and in the constraints. And for the dynamics, we can simply rely on the SLS theorem that tells us that if phi x and phi u lie within the subspace, then this constraint is already capturing the dynamics of the system. And now let's see how SLS can help us with the locality constraints. 
And turns out that the SLS theorem has another statement that relates the controller K with phi x and phi u. And this has interesting implications because that means that we can implement the controller K in terms of phi x and phi u as follows. So the controller has the following implementation in terms of phi x and phi u. And that means that we don't care anymore about what the structure of K is, but we only care about what the internal structure of K is, meaning phi x and phi u. So structure imposed on phi x and phi u directly translates to the structure of the controller. Now, if we introduce the assumption that no driving noise is present, this computation simplifies this from a convolution to a matrix multiplication. So this is what the implementation becomes for a given time step. And just to illustrate this further, let's focus on the three node network. This is what the implementation of the controller exactly looks like. And we can go ahead and try to distribute this implementation across the subsystems. However, this will not be successful because we still need global communication across the subsystems. And here is where this statement comes into play. Because just by setting to zero some of the components of phi x and phi u, we can achieve this distributed implementation with local information only. And remember that we can set some of the components of phi x and phi u to be zero because those are our optimization variables. So imposing locality constraints in SLS is as easy as requiring phi x and phi u to lie within an affine subspace. So we can just go back to our problem statement and impose the locality constraints in this way. And by doing that, we get a distributed and localized implementation of the controllers directly just by using SLS. But we still have a centralized synthesis of phi x and phi u because it is not immediate how to distribute the terms highlighted in red. But I just want to point out that just by using SLS, we've achieved a distributed and localized implementation and a closed loop formulation. And here is where most of the other approaches that rely on a parametrization for MPC would stop, because their optimizations are not amenable for distribution. However, for us, the optimization is amenable for distribution, and I'll discuss now how we can distribute it. So if we have this optimization, let me just perform this change of variables that's going to help me write this optimization in a more compact way. I can now introduce the assumption that cost and constraints introduce no coupling. And that means if I'm the green subsystem, my cost and my constraints can only depend on my state and my input, but no one else's, given this decomposable structure of the constraints and the objective function. And this implies that these two terms are row-wise separable given the definition of phi and how matrix multiplication works. And to illustrate this, let me just use the three node network. So because its state and input correspond to a row, we can separate the rows of phi across the subsystems. And this other constraint is directly column-wise separable because of the way matrix multiplication works. If we were to distribute this computation across the subsystems, this is how we would do it. So this is a partially separable problem and we can solve it via ADMM. I am not going to go into the details of the algorithm because it's a fairly known algorithm for distributed optimization, but I'm going to post it here for reference. And we can use ADMM here just by setting the row-wise separable parts to phi and the column-wise separable parts to C. And since they have to be equal, the problem becomes what follows. And here is where we can apply ADMM. And now because these problems are separable, we can go ahead and separate them. And not only we are distributing rows and columns across subsystems, but also these rows and these columns have a much smaller dimension than the size of the entire system, thanks to the locality constraints. And we will see in simulation that complexity is mainly driven by the size of the locality region, as opposed to the size of the entire network. And we can compute one of the subproblems with its proxy operator, which speeds up computation. And now let me illustrate what the algorithm looks like in this three node network. And we are going to focus on the blue subsystem, which due to the locality constraints only communicates with its neighbors, so we can ignore the orange subsystem. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve the row-wise separable part. And as a blue subsystem, we're only going to solve for the first row of phi. And this is the problem that we're going to solve for. Notice that we require an information collection step at the beginning of the algorithm to know what the initial condition was for our neighbors. Once we have computed the row, we can exchange information with the neighbors to receive the components of the column. We can now compute the column-wise part. And as the blue subsystem, we will need to compute the first column of C. We will use the information that we just received, and the computation in closed form will look like this. Once again, we need to share information with the neighbors, this time to receive information about the rows. Lastly, we perform the ADMM update, and we keep iterating until convergence. And this is the distributed and localized synthesis that we proposed. 
Notice that I just illustrated it with a row and a column per subsystem, but there is usually a set of rows that a subsystem needs to solve for, and the size of this set depends on the time horizon and the dimension of the subsystem. And now if we go back to the problem statement, and we use this algorithm for the synthesis, we have a closed-loop MPC scheme distributed and localized in both the synthesis and in the implementation. And just to show some simulation experiments, we took a chain of couple pendulums, and as a sanity check, we saw that the solution that we obtained with our IDMM algorithm was the same as you would obtain by solving the synthesis problem with a centralized optimization solver. We also studied the impact of introducing the origin as a terminal set, and we're currently investigating the synthesis of less conservative terminal sets. We also investigated how the complexity of our algorithm scales with the size of the network, and to do that we looked at the average runtime per MPC iteration, and we normalized the ampere states in the subsystem. If we look at our synthesis algorithm, two of the steps can be solved in closed form, so complexity is mostly driven by whether the first step can be solved in closed form as well, or needs a minimization solver. And as you can see, if it can be solved in closed form, a solution is found relatively fast, but if it needs a minimization solver, runtime is a little slower. In any case, I just want to point out that these runtimes are not representative because the code for these simulations was not optimized. We just wanted to show here that runtime does not increase with the size of the network. We have investigated ways to compute solution faster using explicit MPC, and that will be the topic of my next talk. We also saw that complexity scales badly with the size of the locality region. So in summary, our approach does not scale with the size of the network, but it does scale with the size of the locality region, which is usually small in large-scale networks. So our approach seems suitable for these kinds of networks. So just to recap, we wanted to work on distributed MPC for large networks, and in order to capture the structure, we introduced locality constraints, so that made our approach distributed and localized. And because this problem, as stated, was hard to tackle, we resorted to the system-level synthesis parametrization. Because the SLS parametrization is closed-loop by definition, our approach became automatically closed-loop. Not only that, but since the controller implementation can be done in terms of VX and VU, we achieved a distributed and localized implementation directly just by using SLS. For the synthesis problem, we have an issue with the separability of those terms, so we made use of the structure of the problem together with the ADMM algorithm, and that let us achieve a distributed and localized synthesis as well. And we saw in simulation that our approach seems suitable for large networks because runtime doesn't increase with the size of the network. I would encourage anyone who is interested in the details to check out an extended version of this paper on the archive, where we relax the coupling assumption, as well as an extended version of this talk on my personal website. We're currently working on the introduction of disturbances in this scheme given that it's already closed loop, as well as investigating terminal sets and making use of explicit MPC to reduce computational complexity, which is what I will discuss in my next talk. Thank you so much for listening!